Adam Souter with Wyckoff Bros Farms, New Carlisle, Indiana. We're a 4,500 acre row crop operation raising seed corn for Monsanto. And then the balance is commercial corn and soybeans uh, in all in a 30 inch scenario. Uh, we've been strip tilling since 2012 uh, with a heavy focus on spring strips. We, we place N, P and K in, in the spring strip with, uh, with the balance uh, that going uh, to corn. And then we do P and K with our 30 inch row soybeans in, in the spring. I uh, really just started out, we've, we've seen a uh, good response in, in the crop to those nutri that nutrition placed in the strip in the spring. Uh, and that's really drove us to stay focused on, on, a, on a spring strip. Uh, like any type of tillage preparation, we, we love getting the strip done early and having some water on that strip uh, with some rainfall to kind of firm up the strip, uh, give it some, uh, just a little bit of a, of a crust on top before the planter gets there. That uh, just seems to be the, the perfect scenario for us on, on that. As far as the, the spring strip, our, our goals when we started and our goals today have always been kind of what we call our core four, and that's, you know, address compaction, place fertility, uh, manage residue, and, and build a seed bed. And that's uh, always our, our main focus, and, and we do that. We've got a really good grasp on that. Uh, it's led us into what nutrition do we put in the strip, how much nutrition do we put in the strip, uh, and, and some of those management challenges that come with tending that machine and, and keeping it moving so we get the acreage done in a day that we need to accomplish to uh, make everybody feel comfortable with uh, corn planters and bean planters chasing that, that machine in, uh, in the springtime. So we normally start, I like to say, as soon as we can for us. We're on the Indiana-Michigan line uh, between or just west of South Bend. Uh, we've got some sandier soils that a lot of center pivot irrigation is on, so we can normally uh, get rolling the, hopefully the last week of March, certainly the first week of April, uh, with a heavy focus on getting as much of that done before our corn planters uh, and, and soybean planters starts to roll there in that uh, early spring time frame. We started out with a very high nutrient load, uh, a total, total product of, of around uh, 350 to 400 pounds. Uh, the crop response to that is is been really well, and, and we do a little bit of that today. Uh, the problem is we, we're carrying uh, eight tons is what the box is labeled that we can carry. Uh, we, we can't quite get that in it, so we're, we're limited to these very short uh, application times between fill-ups. Uh, we found ourselves in that rig setting underneath a, a tender, uh, whether it's a, from one from the fertilizer company or, or ours. We, we were there a lot at the edge of the field filling up. So some of the adjustment, one of the big adjustments we made this year was we dialed back that rate. We're, we're between 150 to, to two and a quarter on, on most of our, our corn rates and a little bit lower for our soybean rate. And that's allowed us to, to cover more acres between fills. And while it doesn't sound like a, a big adjustment, it, it certainly has been. Uh, we, we've just seen that extra 30 or 40 acres a day that, that gives us a lot of security. We've accomplished that uh, with that small adjustment in, uh, in our nutrition package. So uh, we, the, the balance of that, we, we come back and, and we top dress with a dry broadcast spreader. Uh, again, we have the ability to, to turn on irrigation and rain some of that in, but certainly Mother Nature uh, in the early spring when, when we're even top dressing that balance treats us pretty well and, and, and allows that to get rained in. And we haven't seen any, any drawbacks to that program uh, as of yet. One, that's certainly one thing we'll always keep an eye on because we do feel that while we're out there with the machine, building that seed bed and, and addressing compaction, one of the most important things is, is using the nutrition that uh, we, we invested in the equipment and put up the money to have that capability. So we're there, we gotta be using it. Uh, so that's, that's always a focus and will be probably our top thing that we'll always watch as far as where do we need to be with that nutrition package. Uh, we're using a few micronutrients right now uh, with a company by the name of Wolf Tracks, uh, putting some of that on. Uh, we also use some stabilizers on, uh, on the urea and, uh, and some other uh, products. As we get into the, the later months uh, of, of spring, or I say later month, I should say that, that mid-May time frame when we see humidity rise and, and temperatures rise, we, we start to take some of those things back out because any liquid in that tank uh, mixed with that humidity just uh, can create some problems. So we, we kind of uh, ventured back towards the basics of just our NP and K as we move towards our, our last two or 300 acres in, in hopes that we keep that metering system 
uh, moving really well and, and limit the buildup on it and in the tubes. And um, with that, as, as far as the, the, cha the other challenges that, that go with that uh, outside of the, uh, the metering system and, and, and caking, the, the total product that we're putting in, we've, we've addressed those two really well. Uh, the, the other thing is just uh, we feel on, on delivery into, into that strip, uh, one of the key things we've noticed is we, we felt like we had a little bit of lapse in, in crop getting to that nutrition. So we, we've actually gone to a system where we're, we're placing that product throughout the profile. We're, we're, we're blowing it into the ground right behind the shank into a knife void versus uh, physically taking it into the ground with a boot. Uh, it, we feel it gives us some, some nutrition throughout the profile. Uh, Gravity is always going to help us and, and Mother Nature in that rain and, and move some of that uh, through the profile. So if we've got a little bit closer to the top, uh, we certainly feel that the roots of that plant uh, where we're trying to feed it, we'll find that a little sooner. And with the majority of our load still being at the bottom, it just creates a nice even growth through that plant uh, early on through the month of, of June and July until we get out there to supplement with uh, our other nitrogen and, and phosphorus potassium uh, applications that we, we make.